This is a walkthrough of the rig that I built for the Tiger Woods PGA Tour franchise when I was at Electronic Arts. The main function of this rig is to give the animators the same tools they would have in a hand animation rig, but this rig enables the animators to layer their changes over the top of motion capture data. So all of the same basic objects that you would find in a hand animation rig are in this rig as well. You can grab objects to affect the IK chains for the legs and the hands, uh, there are twist bones, uh, objects to control the pole vector direction for elbows and knees, uh, the shoulders are manipulatable separately from the hands, etc. So far what we've seen has all been pretty standard as far as animation rigging tools. What's unique about this rig, however, is that there is actually another skeleton behind the scene. So if we drag our rigging off to one side, we can see that there are two skeletons at work here. The one in bright red is the one onto which motion capture data will be read, and the other skeleton will then follow the motion capture skeleton precisely unless changes are made by the animator, and in that way the animator can layer his or her changes over the top of the motion capture data. So if we import a captured motion to this scene, our character will perform the motion faithfully. And if we unhide the motion capture skeleton and drag our rigging off to the side, we can see that what's really happening is the motion capture skeleton is performing the motion and getting all of the keys read right onto it. And then the rigging is following that motion capture skeleton around. And the target skeleton, the final in-game skeleton, will have the mesh bound to it. But at this point, that skeleton has no keys on it. So now if we wanted to create an animation where our character's foot was up on a bunker, let's say, through the course of this shot, we could manipulate the rigging tools the same way we would with a hand animation rig, and our changes would be layered and animated over the top of the motion capture data. One of the big problems with using motion capture data for this project was the interaction between the hands and the club. Captured data itself never perfectly records the interaction between the hands and the club. So I needed to build in, using set-driven keys, a tool whereby the animators could at will override the motion capture data for the hands and use something else to drive the hands and the IK chains that controlled the arms. In this case, it was the data f collected for the club. So a series of sliders controlling finger poses and end effector constraint weighting allows the animator to determine what it is that's going to be controlling the hands at any given time and the animator can also animate a blend between using motion capture data, hand animated data, or having some other object in the scene such as the club drive the hands. So in this example here, we can see that through the course of the swing itself, we wanted the hands to be stuck to the club exactly. Then when we get to the end of the swing and the character lets go with the left hand, we then want to be able to blend our animation back off of the club and onto the mocap data, which is on the right side of the screen there on the red skeleton. Mm -hmm. 